aside from that, let's um, move on to announcements. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This meeting is being video and audio recorded. Uh, Rob McNeil, our DPW director, I think is going to give a little announcement quickly about a public information meeting we have tomorrow regarding the South Beach Street Road and Sidewalk Reconstruction, as well as a quick overview of the storm number, what, three in a row? Is it that many? I, I, I'm losing count. Uh, Rob McNeil, DPW. So uh, tomorrow at 11 here in this room, uh, we'll do a follow-up uh, public information session on uh, the reconstruction of the South Beach Street South Beach Street Extension and Oak Street uh, for the public with a follow-up of um, what's going on with the, the pipe restoration uh, progress report. Again, 11 o'clock here, uh, expected to be brief, probably 30 minutes or so. And uh, so bring your questions and uh, concerns. Uh, we'll just say that construction started um, on Monday uh, Victor mobilized and was able to, uh, on the first day, remove the brick, uh, palletize all the brick on South Beach um, in the adjacent uh, Yacht Club parking lot. And just a quick follow-up, I did meet with uh, Steamship Authority earlier today, and uh, we have uh, agreed in principle as to the proposed work. So the uh, it's expected that the license agreement between the parties is uh, going to move forward as is. Rob, uh, Rob is, that, is that mostly sidewalk stuff or is it, will that be sewer or updates and pressure testing tomorrow? Uh, it'll be everything. Everything, okay. Yep. Um, any other questions regarding the sewer project or reconstruction? So um, as far as the storm goes, uh, the EOC was mobilized yesterday around 3 o'clock. I uh, was in session until around 7 o'clock, I want to say. Sorry, I don't have the d exact times. But uh, basically corresponded with uh, the loss in power to uh, the first marine cable, the primary cable. Uh, we got notified uh, that uh, primary cable one went, went, went down. They switched over. So we um, got the EOC up and running. Um, shortly thereafter, uh, we ended up losing the second cable. And so we've been, we coordinated with National Grid through the entire event. Um, if you haven't heard, both cables were affected for things that were uh, off island, it was all CAPE related. So uh, thankfully, National Grid was able to uh, mobilize and get that squared away and get one cable back up and running. So that was, uh, that was fantastic and much appreciated. Um, with school being canceled and the <coughs> offices uh, town and state offices being closed, that certainly uh, helped tremendously to keep people off the roads mm -hmm. and let uh, public works do their job. Uh, also provided access, you know, for um, uh, emergency services to, to do their jobs. So again, thank you for, for having uh, those, those times uh, to do that. DPW responded to numerous calls uh, throughout the event and uh, finished cleaning up this morning. Uh, the Shelter was open at the high school, uh, so thank you to the staff there to getting that mobilized. I think there was, at the peak of the storm, there was a total of 16 people uh, that had registered into the shelter, and then uh, emergency services were able to return them uh, to their home base uh, and, and closed up, uh, demobilized that uh, last evening before the EOC shut down. So uh, overall, it was uh, another uh, big event that uh, thankfully resulted in very minimal uh, flooding uh, during the high tide and uh, really was just a lot of wind. So, uh, still working on Pulpus Road. So just to give people a quick update on that. So Pulpus Road sustained more damage yesterday. Uh, so we're gonna, we're still working with our emergency services contractors uh, to get that squared away and, and reopen as quickly as we can. We're trying to work to get uh, materials here on, on island. And as you know, uh, the boats have not been running. So we're uh, scrambling to get that squared away as soon as we can. Okay, I think. Just a quick, um, any, I know we probably haven't had time to look, but any early um, 
idea about erosion that's occurred as a result of the storm yesterday? Any specific areas in mind? Um, no, I just didn't know if you've, anybody's I, been reporting erosion or... Um, other than what we've seen and witnessed at Pulpus, um, I'm not aware of okay. any other reported okay. Okay. Uh, okay. concerns. Again, most of the, you know, the wind was north, northeast, and so it's that sort of that eastern seaboard that was getting slammed in the, uh, in the harbor area. Okay. Thank you. I think that um, you all did a great job with the cleanup. Great. I, well, we I still have a lot of trees, great. as we mentioned before the meeting. There was, there was a lot of trees down yesterday in the milestone pulpus area. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a combination of having the work done over the past couple seasons, uh, trimming out and thinning milestone, I think went a long way in keeping um, that from um, becoming a major problem. So the, the ones that did come down, uh, we were able to be responded to right away and just pushed out of the way for uh, future cleanup. So, again, hats off to the guys. They did a great job yesterday. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. I also just want to mention that I got at least two emails today from various people, town, some town staff, for example, the Island Home staff and um, another area that where DPW and police and fire personnel were particularly helpful. So thank you very much to them. They were really on top of everything. Um, next, I am very, very pleased to um, introduce our new Our Island Home Administrator, Brett Leonardton. He's here with Rachel Day, our Human Services Director, and we just want to welcome Brett to the island. And he's started and um, has been introduced to what storms are like here. And uh, how's it going so far? Uh, great. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to make a move and start, but... Just Brett, just come to the mic, please. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> My voice carries. Usually I don't have a microphone problem. It's um, for the people. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, the storm, that, I mean, we're used to having storms. I'm from southern New Hampshire, so we might have gotten some winds in a few inches. They got two feet. So mm -hmm. those are the type of storms I was used to, so it didn't really phase me. I was yeah. out tooling around in it all day. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, it's great to finally get here and, get situated and I'm all moved in now so now we can get down to business excellent and one of the things we're getting gonna get down to business with uh, we talked a little bit earlier today um, but but not with you yet is to get back together a, a uh, kind of a staff group and and some other officials to start reviewing the island home facility so we were sort of waiting for you to get here and now that you're here we're gonna get at it all right looking forward to it great Thank we're you. really Welcome. glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for bringing Brett in. Um, I'd like to just mention um, that this, this came to my attention uh, a little bit late after the agenda was issued, but um, uh, Sergeant Marshall, Sergeant Kevin Marshall from the Nantica Police Department has been awarded a Leadership in Suicide Prevention Award from the Mass Coalition for Suicide Prevention. He was at the State House this past Monday, and Representative Fernandes was present to give Kevin the award, so we're um, really proud of that and um, congratulate him on, on that award. So we'll get him a little note of thanks. Are, are we... Um, we're a little bit um, confused today without Erica, but... Uh, were we doing anything about the vineyard wind simulation or oh, just make an announcement? Just make an announcement. Thank you, Libby. Um, again, Tobias Glidden from Vineyard Power. Um, we have some visualizations today. You all got to see them. We were also on island um, on Monday, showed a number of vis visualizations to folks, and so far, very positive feedback. Um, but again, if anybody has any questions or concerns about the project, um, you know, mine are fisheries and birds, and so I'm really expressing them to the developer. And anything I can do to help, please just let me know. And we'll and be making you'll the have that uh, in the lobby. Yeah, so that'll be in the lobby for tonight. And then I'm working with Lauren Sinatra to have it set up at a number of locations. So um, I'm going to be working with her to set something up at the school, a town building, you know, etc. Maybe the stop and shop, so people have a great opportunity to to see it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Um, this is the public comment portion of our agenda, where anyone can bring something to our attention that's not otherwise on our agenda. 
Hearing no public comments, there's no new business that I'm aware of. We'll move on to approval of minutes, warrants, and pending contracts. Any um, changes to the minutes? I wasn't here, so I'm going to abstain from those. No. I move. Move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, one abstention, so four to zero. Uh, approval of payroll warrants and treasury warrants. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Um, are there any questions or comments on the contracts? I think... Um, I move their approval. That there was someone here from the fire station? Uh, Project? Is there? Or Steve? Or no. I, I, don't, I, I got an email earlier that said um, the OPM might be here, if there were any questions. Okay. And I don't know if you... So if the board doesn't have any questions, great. I don't know if you want to hear any kind of a quick update about the project. I Should mean, we take we a vote on these and then just get a quick update? Sure. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. If you wouldn't mind coming up and giving a quick update. Sure. Thank you for having me. My name is Brian Flores. I'm with Vertex Companies, the OPM for the fire station project. Um, as you can see, there isn't too much to report yet, but um, under the ground, we've made some good progress with our uh, subsurface utilities. Uh, we've had our sewer hooked up. Our domestic and fire water has been, we have progress on that as well. Um, in the next few weeks, you'll see some excavation going on to tie in the new building into the existing footing. And hopefully a few weeks following that, you'll see some structural steel and actually getting out of the ground. Um, my home is in that trailer right there, so if anyone has any questions, I'm there most of the day to give me a, give me a knock, and I'll be there. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so town manager's report is um, not happening. Consent items. We have a resignation from the government study committee. Um, so we'll want to advertise that position, and we also talked earlier today that um, these were just one-year appointments, so we'll... Uh, about the idea of extending them because they certainly will not be done by the time we would reappoint in June. So maybe we can do that all together, do an extension and appoint any a new member if if there's someone interested and wants to put in an application. Yeah, that sounds okay. Okay, makes sense. Idea. So just a, a motion to send oh, a letter motion, of thanks. Yep, motion to approve and to send a letter of thanks. All those in favor. Oh. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Under citizen departmental requests, um, we have Romaine Nantucket. Melissa Philbrook is here tonight to review the proposed in-town bike path, Washington Street to Milestone, planning discuss discussions, short-term and long-term. Welcome. Thank you. Um, it's good to be here. Um, and unfortunately, VHB, the engineering firm that was going to be doing most of the presentation tonight, um, couldn't get here. So I'm going to um, do as much as oh, I can. Can you just speak a little more into the mic? Okay. I'm going to do as much as I can tonight, try to um, make sure I, if there are questions I can't answer, to get those collected. Um, and really, the what I want to do and just overemphasize probably is that the... Um, there will be a public um, presentation on Monday, March 19th at 4 o'clock at the Athenaeum for any member of the public or of the board who has any questions or concerns or wants just to give input or talk to the engineers one-on-one. -on -one. So there will be a brief presentation by the engineers, and then there will be some boards up, and the engineers are going to be there to listen and to talk and to interact. So we're hoping it's very interactive, um, very informative, and um, really wanted you as well as the public to be aware that that's happening. So um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, as you all probably... What, what time on Monday? I'm sorry, 4 o'clock to 5.30, but okay. 4 o'clock will be the presentation. <laughs> I think they'll be there till 5.30 to, if you can't make it right on time. All right, great. Thanks. At the Athenaeum on the 19th, which is a week from Monday, or whenever the 19th is. That's this Monday, maybe. Um, so... A little bit of background. Um, Remain Nantucket, as you probably know, is very interested. I'm sorry, I'm getting the sun right in my eyes there. Is getting is very interested in how people get in and out of the downtown safely by bike. So we are excited that the bike trail, the connection, the um, um, middle section of the downtown to Milestone 
rotary connector is complete and will be open. Um, we really are excited about what might happen next to make that a full connection from the downtown. So we have been working with a small steering committee consisting of Jason Bridges, Mike Burns, Alan Reithard, Eric Savetsky, and Rachel Hobart to try to have conceptual plans of those other two sections prepared and have hired VHB to do that work. Um, as part of that process, um, we asked them to look at a short term and a long term, you know, sort of a wish list for what it could be someday, and also what can we do in the short term to try to make that connection safe and a good experience for people using it. Um, during that process, VHB has been on island a number of times. They have met with, and I'm just going to read you a list because I think they've really tried hard to meet with people who are stakeholders and interested in the subject. Um, Dave Fredericks, Art Gasparo from Traffic Safety, Paula Leary from NERDA, Nat Lowell, um, NP and EDC, Rob McNeil from DPW, Steve Murphy from the Fire Department, Bill Pittman, Angus McVicker from Police, Mickey Rowland, Council on Disabilities, um, and a bike commuter, um, and uh, Janet Schulte, Department of Tourism, Walt Sp Bukowski, I knew I'd say it wrong, and Ron Foster from Marine Home Center, uh, Charlie Stott from the Civic League, Andrew Vorce from Planning, the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, obviously, um, Mike Burns, Jason Bridges, Ian Golding, Rachel Harvey-Young, and Chuck Larson from DPW was there. So it's been a lot of information gathering in terms of the process, and um, ultimately what they have, what you have in your packets are... Um, Three plans, uh, three sets, one set of plans and two um, colored plans. The first is really something that grew out of the process, which was a request for some immediate interim, interim stat strategies to try to make sure people understood how to travel out of town. So um, basically, it is um, no, f it is simply street painting and signage. So it's to try to make sure, for example, the Francis Street corner, which is now going to be a little crazy because we're going to be asking the bikes to go straight onto the bike path connection when all the trucks are trying to turn right coming out of there. So it just cried out for signage, some painting on the street. So what's there is a, a set of working drawings for the, that we've um, asked VHB to put together for the um, DPW to use this spring for painting and signage only. Um, they are going to, VHB guys who couldn't make it today, uh, are going to, I think, take the slow boat tomorrow to meet with the DPW to field check this and go over it and make sure that it works from the DPW's perspective. So uh, that's the first set. Um, so again, and 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 immediate but very interim strategy really focused on the safety of communicating how to get people from one space to the to the mile from downtown to the milestone rotary given the new trail connection um, the next two plans, which are the two colored plans in your packet, are maybe a little more interesting and are really what the library forum or information session is meant to be. Um, so the, the first one is um, called Figure One, but it's also, oops, let me just put my plans down. Um, it's also called Short Term Improvements. And what you can see is that it is, uh, contemplates coming from the downtown with on that everything here is on road. So it's either a shared road kind of situation when the, when the layout is too narrow or it's bike lanes um, when there's more room um, to do that. The, um, so that's, that's number two. So if we can, I'm sorry, they're just reversed in your packet. So figure one is this one. So the blue lines are where the on road um, uh, travel can happen for bikes in the near term. So that's, um, I don't know how we define that in municipal world, but maybe that's two to three years out to try to make that um, as good as it can be in the short term. The, the plan, which is actually above it in your packet there, is figure two. It's entitled Long-Term Improvements. And this is what we'd like to say is a little more pie in the sky. This is the wish list of how it would be wonderful if we could create this bikeway sometime in the future. And I mean, you know, probably 20 years in the future. But you'll see it's, an, it's there 
Um, when you start in the downtown, it's more of a yellowish orange. That is an off-road path on the water side of Washington Street. The blue is then Washington Street extension past sales onto um, the red, which is the existing um, bike trail that now um, will be fully open this summer. And then when you get out to Orange Street again, it jumps um, back off the road um, at Goose Pond and heads around the water side of Marine Home and then back out to the bike ride. So this is a really, uh, it's a, it's a hopeful plan. Um, there are tremendous hurdles to this, but it's the one that I think we would want people to say, is this the goal we're working towards or is this not something people want to see? Um, there are a lot of hurdles. Many of it includes property rights acquisitions, um, permitting. Uh, the plans look very complicated uh, because what they really are is resource plans. So they've been trying to look at all the different things that affect these routes um, so that they can assess feasibility. So all we've really asked them to do is look at feasibility, look at it conceptually, and try to get um, them out onto the table to start the public discussion so the planning can continue. So again, I would just encourage people, particularly members of the public who have questions or are thinking about this, to come to the Athenaeum on the 19th at 4 o'clock um, so they get a chance to hear from the people who really understand them, the engineers, and um, can look in more detail than these, these um, very big overbrush plans sort of provide. But again, it's conceptual at this stage. It's just trying to move the process forward so that we get to a point where we can really feel good about how we ask people to ride their bikes in and out of the downtown from the Rotary. Um, I think that's everything in my notes, but I'm happy to try to answer questions. And Mike is here, too, who might be a little more on the technical side than I am. Uh, just a comment. I, um, it's always good to have a vision. <laughs> And that's what's because it creates some hope for the future. And as we go through the process of not being there as quickly as we want, it's always helpful to say this is where we'd like to end up. So I applaud you for doing that. I, and the idea, regardless right. of what the plan is, I just think it's good to right. have that. Right. No. And and you know, Rose and White away have been talking about this sort of this idea for a while. So again, it's not something we invented and give them credit for thinking about that out of the box. But again, it, there's, we're trying to understand what it will take to do it and then how long. And I really think it's probably, you know, maybe past my time before I'm going to ever see it. But I might walk it rather than ride my bike. Maybe. Well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll wait in. I hope that it's sooner than that. I would I'm looking at it. This is something we absolutely need. The existing on street is going to have two very dangerous choke points. One's going to yeah. be at the corner uh, when you're going on to Washington Street Extension. That's Unless we sign that differently and make people stop, that's going to be a really dangerous corner with bikes going straight and cars turning that aren't used to turning. Uh, and then I think the other choke point's going to be next to Henry Jr., yeah. where people have to cross the street and cars are not going to want to stop for bikers and people crossing the street. It's just, you know, I bike a fair amount in the summer and it's, it's dangerous. And so I just, I would hope that, you know, land acquisition and whatever is necessary here becomes a town priority above and beyond other, th some of the other land things that we're doing, because this is to, the, to benefit everybody. This is to benefit the entire island, uh, not just individuals. And I think that we should find a way to put this up the chain and get it done so that you get to ride it on your bike. Thank you. Well, it's music to our, my ears and certainly everything we do at Remain. But I think this, this summer, I think the signage and the painting will really hopefully help. That's going to help. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to have to do that because I think it, people will be confused, particularly there on Francis Street. So the signage that's proposed and the um, street painting, I think, will be good. And Melissa, is the biggest uh, obstacle of the land acquisition? Or what are some of, or what are some of the other right. issues or obstacles? Um, Again, probably this is a great engineering question. Um, the permitting for the phase two, the, the long term, is pretty significant um, because there's some significant wetland impacts. There's issues about flooding, um, you know, how you're going to manage all of that. So there's, um, it's, it's a combination, in my understanding, of both having the right to be there and then having something that would be durable in that location. Um, the phase one... Um, or the, I'm not supposed to call them phases, I guess, yet, but the, the short-term conceptual plan, um, 
I think can happen fairly quickly if we just make it a priority. Yeah. Um, there's always some acquisition work that has to happen, I think, but they're engineering for it um, pretty much after we have some public input this winter, I think can get going right away. And then it's just an, a, a function of figuring out how to pay, to, pay for it and um, make sure we have the right to put it where it, the town has the right to put it where it goes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. The, um, the last picture in here was actually a picture that I that I took in Maui. Um, I saw um, that <laughs> because I thought it was just an incredibly lovely. It, it was a walkway, not an actual bike path, but it was a pretty wide walkway that they did raised up between the edge of a bluff coming down and the beach. Yeah. And um, they were actually building another one in the si um, in another location, and the signage was talking about how this was more sensitive to maintaining the beach um, mm -hmm. and not eroding it with um, with flat with walkways that were flat right onto the beach. Right. So I just um, I thought it was you know valuable to the discussion, especially when you're talking about permitting up and back along those creeks. We may need to do a site visit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think we need palm trees. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Oh, so I sat in these meetings and uh, I was uh, not skeptical of the long term, but just like, mm, yeah, we'll look at it just for fun. But the more I sat in there and had Alan Reinhardt, who's been looking at this for a long time, way ahead of, of, of our oh, yeah. endeavors, and then having uh, just Land Bank and everybody really look at it, it is doable whether it's 10 years or, or 25, but if we made it a priority, we could do it. And it'd be a ton of collaborations and a little bit of luck mm -hmm. and a little bit of hard work, and it, it could be done. The short term also could be done. I think in our next strategic planning, this may be one of our options for transportation that is achievable in three years. Okay. The fact that we've already, well, the engineers and you have already spoken with Marine Home Center and you know everybody on traffic safety Right. Can everybody understands what, what's happening? And maybe there's a I know moving uh, utility poles are expensive and but maybe there's something that could be done in all these places. Uh, Orange Street is the biggest low hanging fruit. There's lots of room there. Washington Street's tough. But you know, sitting in these meetings, it's uh, it all can be done. Linking it to the strategic plan, Matt may give may give it uh, more priority. Yeah, I, think be, yeah, great, I think that's a great I think that's a great idea. Yeah. When we talked about this in the comp plan days 20 years ago, so this is not. Right. You know, it's it, not brand new. Yeah. So the question is how do you move it from the conceptual, let's talk about it, to actually we have no choice. We have to do something. It's, it's too dangerous, so let's get going. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the question. How do we do it so it's five or 10 years, not 25? And, right. and if you said we need, a, we need someone to own it, mm -hmm. whether that's a town person or a mm -hmm. volunteer or right. whatever, so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank Great. you all. And again, thank you, Mike. I'm supposed to say it one more time at the end. Um, Monday, March 19th, 4 o'clock at the Athenaeum. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Um, town Manager's Report, Part 2. We have a request for execution of a second amendment to a December 2014 memorandum of understanding with the land bank regarding transfers of property to the land bank in exchange for these properties that are listed here, 39 Washington and easement rights at 44 Washington. This is otherwise known as the grand swap. And it's the second amendment that extends the dates by which certain actions need to be taken, namely the entire transaction to be done and then another date for part of the transaction to be done. The prior completion date was hoped to be December 2017, but that has come and gone and the transaction is not entirely complete. There are, there are some things that are not entirely within the town's control to get done. There are some federal approvals required d due to the nature of some of the parcels of land. And there are um, easement documents and plans that are being done by, you know, a contractor. So this amendment specifies that it's pretty well outlined, I think, in your packet, but specifies that one of the parcels that would be transferred to the land bank, which is known as the wood property, 
It is a property out in, near Warren's Landing. Um, Land Bank has, has indicated that if the town is unable to convey that property to them by May 31st, they will not agree to extend a license that we have for the 39 Washington Street property. That's the property next to 37 Washington with finances, and we've been using that for lifeguard housing. So we believe that it would be very unfortunate if that actually came to be and it would be have you know a critical impact on the lifeguard program. But we I've been talking with town council about this quite a bit in the last couple of weeks, and we believe that the transfer can be done by May 31st. That's the wood property transfer. And we expect all the re remaining parcels to be transferred um, by the rest uh, by the June thirtieth date. And again, we're going to have to start calling people daily to get this done. That might be an exaggeration, but call them quite a bit to the the people that aren't in our control, the federal people and the um, engineer surveyor that's working on it but make long that might have been sort of rambly but the general gist is that we think we can meet these dates but what if we can't then we uh, have a problem right that we're going to need to discuss with the land bank and at this point even now, if we were to lose the 39 Washington Street property, again, that will have a critical impact right. on a town service. I'm not so, I'm not real comfortable signing. Yeah, A, I don't like the tone. I don't like, it, you know, I, I, you guys are working the best you can. We need, we need a real estate person. We've identified that. But to, to stay on top of these issues. But I personally don't. I just think it should be more congenial and less threatening. If you don't do this by this date, we're taking your lifeguard housing away. That's impacting the entire island. And I just think it's, it's, it's it, it, I just feel like town departments should be interacting a little more congenially. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm not sure I want to sign something that says that if we don't transfer wood, because what if something happens that's not within our purview? What if mm -hmm. we can't get a, you know, and someone out to the site to do what they do or the state puts it at the bottom of the pile? I don't think. We want to be in the situation where we don't have lifeguard housing. And so, you know, I understand the land bank's desire to get this done. I understand why they think they have to pressure the town a little bit, because sometimes the town hasn't been the most, uh, you know, been on top of some of these issues as quickly as they could have. But I think the land bank has to realize that the town, you know, isn't in the real estate business, and the land bank is. So they have people that are, do this for their job. So yeah, anyway, but, I, I just, but, some, of the, some of the wording in here was... A little bit, a little bit harsher than it needed to be, and shouldn't have been put in writing. Should have just been a phone call, and you know Eric and Libby should have talked and worked it out. But anyway, yeah, there are some things in here that we don't fully control. I mean, I want to see this move forward as quickly as possible, and I have for a long time. But um, I'm not comfortable signing this. I think we've got to figure out some compromise. If there's something that they want to do on the Woods property, maybe we can grant them a temporary license um, so that they get more control of it. And obviously, we will do everything we can to meet this May 31st deadline. But agreeing to potentially lose lifeguard housing when people are already being hired to come for the summer. A couple months away from is, the summer. Um, is just really challenging. Um, so I don't know if we need to have a joint meeting or what we need to do. Um, I think really along those lines, I'm very uncomfortable about, and I'm assuming this has come in as a recommendation from the town administration, but in the absence of a plan uh, for housing for the lifeguards, uh, if this doesn't happen, May there was that's a very short timeline from here, from now. I'd be I'd be. Uh, um, I'd be concerned about that. I would like to see a, a plan from Libby on what we'll do uh, if we sign this and that event happens. So don't you think the opportunity for compromise is possibly through a joint meeting? I mean, I would hope that it might be something that could just be worked out between town administration and land bank administration in terms of some kind of a compromise. But if we 
need to. We can all talk about it in a joint meeting. But I, I mean. Well, did these, assuming those things happened and weren't fruitful, but maybe not. Let me, so how did, how did we get to this point? This was discussion between the attorneys for Land Bank and um, okay. the town. All right. So have you, we've, we've, you've not responded to Eric about your concerns? I have not it. talked directly with him, no. Okay. I could give that a try. And see if there's a comp something that they'd be comfortable with in terms of getting some control of the Woods property if we can't fully convey it. Um, and we'll, try, we'll do everything we can to try and fully convey it. It sounds like Vicki's pretty confident that we'll be able to, but there are things that she can't control. I, I think we got to get this done. Whatever we have to do, hire somebody else, whatever we need to do, but we can't lose our lifeguard housing. So I'm not, I don't want to sign it either in this form. Yeah. Is it something that we need so we don't want to not sign it but we want to at least see if there's opportunities for compromise does that seem fair can i ask a question what happens if we don't sign it what do the, the, the attorneys keep going back and forth um i'm thinking they might assert that we haven't performed mm -hmm. In getting this, in, and in completing the full today. transaction, they could, they could assert that today, since it, since it expired in December. Okay. But since we're talking about it in the public, I mean, I just if yeah, we'll, I don't. We'll get some. Uh, so this, if you look, this, it seems there's two things: survey plan for easements. We're eating, waiting for easement plan for the boat ramp, and it, a lot of the work is done, but there way it needs to be finalized. And the other one is approval by EEA for conveyance. Now, EEA is probably the one, Libby, that we would, this, even since we get on the phone, we could probably get that done, the survey stuff. Yeah. But the second, number two, is the one that there's probably no guarantee, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know. It's going to depend on how quickly the federal group will move. There was email earlier in the week about it, and it sounded like they were asking for a little... A little bit more information, which was being provided quickly, promptly. Right. So hopefully they will act quickly and promptly. If we had the survey, though, and then it was a result of the state holding up, would that be considered a failure to perform? It sounds like it. Yeah, it the way that this is written, it seems like it to me, without counsel. So, so I, mean, I don't know if we can as a group negotiate this right now, I think it's better in the hands of town administration and maybe the chairman um, before it's brought back and if it's, you know, so. And if you can't find a compromise, then I would like to see the, the plan for addressing housing for the lifeguards. Maybe you could authorize that the town manager and myself talk to the chairman and the administrator of the land bank. And that's what I was saying. It come up with a, a solution that, and uh, just report back to us. That's that's the motion. That's the motion. Is there a second? second? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And I'm, and I'm I think we're all willing to sign it if we to make sure that we're covered. That's mm -hmm. yeah. That it's fair. That, that's that's, okay. that's the issue. Uh, maybe, I, I, yeah. We can't sign, I can't sign a document that says we're not sure if we're going to have housing. I mean, that's just like, right. you know, so. We'll, we'll report yeah, back. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. We'll have good comments. Okay. Committee reports. I have one. Um, Affordable Housing Trust Fund had an additional meeting last Friday, uh, and this was our session, our initial session with Judy Barrett to go through the housing production plan and start to consider what we would need to do to develop a a strategic plan, an operations manual, all the things that have sort of been brought up in the past two months discussion that there may have been some shortfalls or misunderstandings. Um, that was about two hours. And as a result, we have um, a phone-in conference with her at our next regular meeting. And then we've scheduled four consecutive month months starting May to do strategic or workshop sessions 
uh, ranging from four hours to two hours, with Judy being there. So I think we're, we're making some forward progress with that. Great. Uh, the only thing I'd mention um, that next uh, Wednesday, um, um, Eric, I'm trying to, Esfelt from MIT is going to be presenting his uh, um, project that he's been working on for the last year about how to, another, th another thought of preventing uh, tick-borne disease. Um, and it should be very interesting. I encourage everybody to tune in. Um, it wasn't a committee, but uh, Jason and I attended the um, locals making a difference for Nantucket meeting on Saturday, and it was just it was very interesting. I thought it was val valuable discussion concerns. I would say generally in line with things that we're all concerned about, and um, are, and you know have been doing so certain things about. So I just I, I thought I thought it was productive. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I hope that people got something out of it, and um, I think that they were going to schedule another meeting in May. Yeah, I wish more people would have been there because it really was good discussions. They did tape it, so I'm not sure where it's going to be televised. In CTV 18. Oh, okay. Yeah. Were there any themes or recurring um, issues, or was it across the board pretty broad? Um, there were things like, you know, the actual representation at town meeting. And you know, really getting everyone's voice heard was 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 a, a valid discussion. There were concerns about enforcement things, you know, from like like down to like litter and texting while driving. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely things that are like a lot about human human behavior awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and but some of those things like texting and litter could there could be some public private yeah. collaborations. You know, like already. You know, really extending things like the clean team that already works with our you know, DPW. There could be other things that you know that we could do. But yeah, yeah, it was uh, um, the moderator did a good job of saying if you've already if it's already been said, you know, one yeah. issue at a time. So it was really spread out. People knowing where to find information, knowing when meetings are happening, that kind of thing. Yeah. Which I know we do such a good job of getting everything on the website, but sometimes people have trouble finding it. So that, mm -hmm. that just those kind of things were, were discussed. Yeah, I was got one other comment that I've, I found interesting was someone said, we don't preserve the 20th century well enough. Mm -hmm. We do really well with the previous two centuries. We have organizations that I never really thought about it that way. Which is leading right into what I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that, uh, I think, and I've talked about it before, I think that there are some things that we need to give the HDC the power or the ability to do. Uh, I think there's still too many uh, truly historic homes that are being, uh, you know, just basically completely thrown into the dump and just the skin left and they're being rebuilt. I don't think that that's, you know, to the, st the, to the park service, the National Park Service historical standards. Uh, I think, and people say, well, what's the big deal? I think of a lot of why people come to the Nantucket is its historical accuracy and it's authenticity. We're at, you know, the homes are actually real. Now, we're losing them, but they're actually real. Uh, the Jacobs House in Madiket that just recently happened is interesting because that was the precursor to the HDC, but it's a 50-year-old dwelling that was just demolished that is, may not be historically accurate to the you know, 1800s, but it's architecturally significant. It was you know, a dwelling that was... Uh, you know, only one of two done by a pretty famous architect and, you know, it was written up quite a bit. And so, you know, we've got to maybe widen it if we want to save things like that or the Buckminster Fuller geo geodistic dome that we lost. I mean, those types of houses were quirky 50s, 60s structures that, you know, in my mind are contributing now. And so how do we, you know, if we have to go to town meeting uh, to do that, I think it's important. I think, you know, I think, we are lose if we lose our authenticity, we, it'll hurt every. It hurts the economy all the way around, and so, uh, you know, just as we get closer to a special town meeting, a regular town meeting, I think we should be asking HCC to come in and, you know, and maybe getting some advice from people that do this to strengthen our rules to handle these types of situations. I, once something like that is gone, it's gone, and there's nothing you can do. And and in that house, I might not argue all that strongly, 
uh, it's in a flood zone, et cetera. But the ones downtown that are completely fine, there's no reason to throw out the old trim and the old floors and a lot of walls that are good, and all the old windows, all that stuff is gone. And once it's gone, we can't replace it. So I just think we need to, you know, sort of look. And, and the HTC used to do more of that. They used to require more of that than they seem to be doing now. So it's just a topic that I think needs a little bit more light shined on it and a little more work put toward it. Right? So. I could jump into that discussion, but I'm going to save it for later. <laughs> Very interesting discussion, though. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I don't know a lot about that, but it would be interesting. I was, I was, very, I was very calm. I was very nice, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you kind of get it on the in interiors, I think. So, the, you know, I don't know if that's a path we go down, but it's certainly a good. So a lot of places do, well, and the preservation. It, and, and, uh, and if you're gonna, and if you are gonna do get rid of it, then at least yeah. you should have to document it. And you should be a process you have to go through before you do just, you know, take the wrecking ball to it. So, you know, so so somehow, and and I know that the HGC is they're they're under unbelievable pressure. Right. They've got tons of work, right. Right. and you know, so there's a whole there's a bunch of other issues to do deal with this. But there I just was, think there was a house around the corner from yeah. me that they tore it down. I think they hit some a couple of old boards on the front, and that was about mm. it. That's about it yeah. that was left. So. Yeah. Didn't the HTC and Sustainable Nantucket, or someone put together a document in 2009, guidelines for um, some, sort of what you were talking about, Matt, of preserving windows, and I think it was something along the lines of a, a green approach to um, renovation. Does that ring a bell? I read it, um, read through it, skimmed through it a couple months ago, but it seemed like something based on my experience that wasn't really being looked at now, but it looked like a very valuable document and is right in line with what you're talking about. Right. Uh, unfortunately, if you, and I, we did uh, 7 and Orange Street, and it's been listed, uh, and we're uh, applying for tax credits. There's tax credits and other things available if you do the right thing with these properties. So there's a financial incentive, and there's a, you know, it, it, the, the property, the pieces aren't going out to the dump. It's, it's sort of it's a win-win uh, and I think, unfortunately, though, a lot of times the the incentives are wrong. You know, a lot of times you you it's it, you know you'll hear it's quicker and more efficient, but what you won't hear is that you can make more money. You know, you make more money buying a whole bunch of new windows because it's cost plus, and you get a markup, and you get you know you get your discount from the where you buy the windows, and you know so there's a lot more money to be made by completely throwing everything out and starting again, but that doesn't. That doesn't help our help us in the long term. Right. I just think you know people have to realize, and if you buy, if you're looking for the location or for the building, part of why people should be buying the buildings is the history and the love of that old building. You know, I grew up on uh, 45 Center Street, and it's one of the few buildings that still remains, and the people who bought it for my parents love it and wouldn't think of touching it. I would be devastated if someone else bought it from them and and did what is happening most of the rest of the, that area. You know, every you know to rent it for the maximum amount of money, you need to have AC and every bedroom. You have to have a bathroom next to every bedroom, and then you can rent it at renting season and wedding season, and you can rent it here and there. And isn't this great? No, it's not great. You know, you can upgrade your bathrooms, you can upgrade your kitchens, and still have beautiful historic home. You know, and but so anyway, I just think that, and it isn't just it, public relations isn't enough. I don't think. You know, I don't think it's. There has to be some incentives to keep it in place and some disincentives to not do it. So we have to look at everything. And as far as the exterior, the, H, the HTC has got a lot clearer path with the historic structures in town. And, you know, there's, as far as I know, if this is still the practice, I mean, normally when a historic house is being renovated, there's a full window survey to see if they're all the original windows and... Um, and, you know, if there are exterior changes, there's often historic photo documentation asked for to see if, like, a roof walk was there before, if they're trying to put one back, th those kind of items. Um, it's a lot trickier with these houses that are in outlying areas that are not that well documented, whether it's a more modern architect that's got – that's that's significantly famous um, for a certain style, or if it's a historic structure that's more more out 
in, in an outlying lying area like in Quayas or in Quidnet or something like that where it's just not as well documented. So. Like the tea house that came to us, mm -hmm. that, it, that was well documented. Mm -hmm. So... so. Anyway. It was nice to have time for that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. We wanted to continue. Any other committee reports? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously.